We're going to go now to the rarely used line 10 and speak to uh, Jessica Rendell. How are you? Hi, Pete. Can you hear me okay? I can. Hi there. Of course, I'm calling from Heavenly Creatures. Okay. And I just felt compelled to call in and, and uh, weigh in on the situation with the legal drama. Okay. Um, so, I mean, let me start by saying that I'm not familiar with either of these gentlemen or their dogs themselves, but I am inclined to disbelieve Mr. Davis simply because we, not because I'm an animal fanatic. I mean, there are cases where people lose their animals and they're in great shape before they're lost and they come back to you and they're in terrible shape from having had to survive on the streets. Um, having said that, I mean, I, I could practically have written <laughs> the, uh, you know, all the words that came out of Mr. Davis's mouth and all the words that came out of Jonathan's mouth because we deal with, as the Beagle Paws and the SBCA and all the other groups, we deal with these situations all the time. Yeah, ba and, you know, Davis, when, I think he said his name is, uh, I could be wrong there, but in any case. So you're, you think, you're, you're siding with the, uh, the finder of the dog, uh, Jonathan? Yes, just because, you know, again, not because I'm with an animal rescue organization, um, you know, because I'm not a fanatic. I do know that animals can, can get away from anybody and can sometimes come back in hard shape, but we deal with these horrific cases of, of fecal neglect all the time. I'm not saying that the dogs were, you know, uh, that thin because the owner himself starved them, but I think in this situation, you know, the RNC, given the condition of the dogs and given the fact that beagles are so wide, or sorry, abused in such a widespread manner that they really should have gone to his home and inspected, you know, his pens or whichever way he keeps them to make sure that, you know, everything was up to code. You yeah, know, I mean, do, do, do you uh, doubt uh, what he's saying in terms of the effort he put in to try to find them, uh, that he contacted everybody, uh, you know, his joy at uh, finding out that... I, I uh, think what he actually said was that he contacted the SPCA after he learned that somebody had his dogs. The person who found the dogs said that they had called the various organizations and there was no report, so I can vouch for that because... When somebody loses their dog, if it's, you know, somebody is putting in any amount of effort, we hear about it. I mean, in, in these days of social media, it spreads like wildfire, and we had no reports about those beagles. Um, and the other groups are saying they didn't either. So, you know, I mean, typically anybody who really cares about their dogs in this day and age, they know about at least one of the organizations, and they'll put in a report. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm not clear. I can't remember exactly the timeline. He did tell me several times, and I should have uh, taken better notes on you, it. I but think he, what you had said was, you know, this person says that um, he didn't call anywhere. Did you call the SPCA? And it sounded to me as though he was saying he called them after he found out the dogs were there. Hmm. Or that they had some contact about the dogs. But, I mean, when does a hunter or any person who neglects an animal ever own up to us? Never in my experience. I don't think that Mr. Davis, if that's his last name, is lying. I think that he was probably raised in a manner, you know, to which he he or in which he saw, you know, dogs being kept outside all the time. Yeah, but there are clear uh, contradictions in the two stories. I mean, the, the Jonathan who well, called and said that he, he, situation clearly. Yeah, well, he he said that uh, you know he was uh, told to wait and the owner would come and the owner never came. So eventually he called and was told to release the dogs and they'd find their own way home. I mean, uh, he he is emphatically denying that, saying that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That they were on their way when they were told, no, don't bother, we'll bring them to you, and then. And uh, when they were called, uh, you know, they weren't even given a chance to explain why the dogs might be in uh, rough condition, uh, but never, ever said uh, to release them. Uh, they wanted their dogs back in as quickly as possible. But the reason that I believe that it was likely said that, you know, that somebody did suggest the dogs be released is because that is a sentence that we hear over and over again. We get calls all the time from people who find beagles and have the, the right down to, you know, every last detail, really, really, have the same experience that Jonathan, I think his, his name is, said. They pick up a dog, um, they, you know, the dog has a, a tag on, they call the owner, and when I say dog, in, in nine cases out of ten or 9.9 .9 cases, they're beagles. They call the owners, and the people don't seem very interested. Hmm. And that's when the groups will get a call. You know, this person will say, my God, you know, I saw this person, and they've told me to let the dogs loose, they'll find their way home, or they just don't, or actually in some cases, they're not even aware their dogs are missing, even though the dogs have been gone for days because they're kept outside, and they don't necessarily feed them enough. And so they, they're not even aware because they're not going back and forth that the dogs are gone. Okay. Well, right? listen, uh, clearly we're not going to pass any judgment here because they're just two stories that we have no way of verifying. You have experience in this. You have your inkling as to yeah, like, I don't know other where the people. truth lies. I mean, it, it, yeah. It's possible the finder is lying, but I really, you know, I'm not the kind of person to make assumptions. But I really don't think that he is just because this is a carbon copy of what we deal with all the time. And with regard to the RNC, that was the main reason I had to call in because, again, 
we go through this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to them for help. I'm not saying that every police officer out there is, is on feeling, you know, yeah. but there's certainly an awful lot of them that, just like Jonathan experienced, say, oh, well, you know, I got to drive dogs in the backyard myself. Nothing wrong with them. They're the hunting dogs. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't it true that the gentleman who owns the dogs, they didn't need to go to the vet? Yeah, he said they weren't in as bad a shape as he expected, and uh, he didn't see the need to take them to the vet. The younger one was fine, and the uh, four-year-old was uh, well on its way to full recovery, as far as he's concerned. So that's that's the the story. Well, I mean, I'd be hard pressed to name anybody that I know or that most people know that wouldn't take their animal to the vet after they've been gone for ten or fifteen days. Because that's the other thing I think that was thrown up in the air is how long the dogs have been missing. I'm, you know, inclined to believe Jonathan when he says he was told they were gone for fifteen days. Okay. All right. Well, listen, yeah. Jessica. We appreciate your time and contribution on this. It certainly adds to it, and uh, the truth is in there somewhere, I guess. But uh, you seem to have your opinion on where it lies, and uh, we'll let our listeners uh, figure it out for themselves, I guess. Thanks again. Oh, listen, and oh, congratulations right, for being the beneficiary of some of the, uh, is it the activities at the uh, Holyrood uh, uh, yeah, Winter Yeah, the Crystal Dick. So we're, so we've been advertising. We hope people will take the plunge for homeless animals and throw themselves into the cold water <laughs> in March. You don't get some sponsors because we'll use every penny of that money to help save dogs that you know need to be rescued and cats. It, it's a great cause. I don't know if I'd wish that on my worst enemy though. <laughs> that I, don't know, I don't know if I'm brave enough to do it. I'm thinking about it, but there's right. a few brave enough other types I think that are going to kind of get involved for the and cause. Good on them. Thanks again, Jessica. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.